Yes. Ya podemos decir que estamos con un viejo amigo, el señor Roy Disney. No vamos a decir títulos, tiene el apellido Disney. Y le vamos a preguntar algunas cosas respecto de pocas juntas. Estamos en el Central Park. Hi, how are you, Mr. Disney? Very well, thank you. Uh, this is the first Disney animation movie based in a true story, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, based on the story of, a, of events that happened when the British settlers first came to America in 16, the early 1600s. Movies at the Central Park is the first time, I am right? As far as we know, it is the first time, and uh, probably there are a few people hoping it'll be the last. But next, the moon. Uh, uh, maybe, we've talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel in these days? Well, uh, as a parents uh, with the children born? In? Well, we're, we're feeling very happy and we're anticipating this event tomorrow night enormously. And, and we're, we're very happy about Pocahontas. Very uh, important people is coming. I think so. I, uh, the, the most important people of all are our are, are audience, it's families, and uh, so there's going to be a hundred thousand, hundred thousand mothers and fathers and kids here. It's amazing. It's a Central Park life. This is, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we think we should probably be in the Guinness Book of World Records when we're through. Please, you have a camera there. Argentinian people is seeing to you. Uh, tell them what they're going to see when they meet Pocahontas in a few days. Well, the first thing you're going to see is really one of the most beautiful girls that was ever animated, I think, in, in, in her story, uh, which is about the meeting of two cultures, which is about the Indians that were in America when the British settlers came, and about a wonderful young woman who stood between them and tried to prevent them from fighting each other. Thank you very much, Mr. Rodriguez. Bye bye. My pleasure. Bye bye. Please. Estamos con un genio, el creador de la sirenita, del personaje, el que la dibujó, el que la supervisó, la bestia en La Bella y la Bestia, Aladdin en la película de Aladdin, y ahora es el que dibujó a pocas contas. Se llama Glenn King. Con este genio vamos a hablar un ratito. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. Congratulations for Pocahontas. Thank you. Uh, what does the animator, supervising animator do specifically? Well, my job at the beginning of the film is to find out who the character is. It's almost as if somebody's introducing you to somebody that's really there. You know, that when I start on a character, I know this person is real. I just don't know what they look like yet. And I know that Pretty soon, I'll find out what she looks like and who she is, and I have to believe that she's real. And the first thing that I learned about animation was taught to me by uh, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson, the, the masters that had done Pinocchio and Snow White. And they kept saying, um, Glenn, you need to animate with sincerity. Okay, well, how, how do you do that? I mean, do you press harder on your pencil and you grit your teeth? They, what, it, what it was is that, They wanted me to believe that the characters were real. And the more inspiration, the more conviction I find about a character, the more I can animate with the sincerity. So the course of designing Pocahontas was to find the inspiration, to find any drawings of her, to find inspirational faces around me that I could use as a basis for my design, visit Jamestown, meet her descendants. I mean, a whole array of uh, sources came together for me. But you said this film has been a real learning experience for you, for you. What was the challenge for you, learning more? Well, I feel like animation, each step that we've gone from every film, we're standing on the shoulders of the film before. Mm -hmm. Like We would never have been able to animate Pocahontas three years ago. I mean, there's no way when I did Little Mermaid was I skilled enough to animate the, the complexity of the acting, the subtleties mm -hmm. in the performance in this character, Pocahontas. See, Pocahontas is not about a character that's, whose face is really animated and squashing and stretching. And This is a character who 
you're trying to communicate a person with a lot of depth in her spirit and her soul. And, but how do you draw that? It's, it has to come through very, very, very subtle little expressions in her eyes, in her, in her mouth, or uh, even, in, even in her hair. Like for the first time when John Smith sees Pocahontas, she's standing in yes. this, this mist, and it's, the mist is swirling around. It's very romantic. It's this magical moment. And what I wanted to communicate was not that this girl is a babe, you know, not that she's got this incredible figure, but that she has this, this attractive spirit. This, there's something inside of her that's drawing him to her. And to me, the best way to do that was to is animate her hair as if it's, it's a symbol of the character of Pocahontas. And as it moves, yes. it's drawing him in. It's captivating him through the movement of her hair. I mean, things like that where I feel like I'm learning. I'm learning the importance of the subtleties of this art form, whereas before I was thinking animation's about moving drawings. Now I'm realizing it's not about moving drawings, it's about moving people with your drawing. When you work uh, with The Little Mermaid, you have to fight with the hair in the water. Now the challenge was to fight with the wind. <laughs> With, with, with the hair, too. Yeah, it, they're both very rhythmic, lyrical movements. I don't know why I keep doing these characters with all this hair, though. I, I'm getting very jealous about all these characters. It, one of the things that's challenging with Pocahontas is that we're drawing a face that What's is the difference uh, between a Little Mermaid and Pocahontas? Well... Deeply different? Yes. I mean, Ariel was based on my wife. Very... Caucasian face. She has kind of a girl next door look. She's she was a cheerleader and um, Pocahontas is not Caucasian. She's based on a Mongolian facial design. Mm -hmm. the structure is entirely different. Matter of fact, every aspect of the face is the opposite. Straight. Well, instead of her cheekbone coming in and being lower, it's up high and pushes out. Or instead of these big eyes, they're very narrow and angled. Instead of nose turning up, mm -hmm. it's much straighter. The lips go the opposite way. The jaw is much more square. The face angles. All these things, it's one thing for me to learn it, but then you have 18 other animators who I have to teach and to get them all seeing the same vision of this character so we don't have 18 different versions of Pocahontas up on the screen. But how are they alike, Ariel and Pocahontas? Well, there's a similarity with Ariel and Pocahontas, and I'd say even with Beast and Aladdin. For me. All these characters have one thing in common, and they have a burning passion in their heart, a desire to be something and to do something that's impossible, but they're not going to take no for an answer. They're, they're going to reach that no matter what gets in their way. For Ariel to someday live on the land and walk like the humans do, for Beast to believe that somebody could love him, for Aladdin to rise out of a, a station in life that he is and somebody live in the palace and for Pocahontas to find this invisible calling to follow her path even though she doesn't know what it is and in the end when she thinks she's found it she finds it wasn't John Smith it wasn't the man she loves matter of fact in order for her to really find her path she has to give him up to do something that no other Disney heroine has ever done I mean when Ariel finds her man and when uh, Cinderella finds her man they found everything for Pocahontas she has to give that up to find her and follow her highest calling. It's, it's a big step of growth for a, a Disney heroine. Glenn Kim, thank you very much. Congratulations, genius. <laughs> bye, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.